Are you looking for the easiest way to set up weight-based shipping with WooCommerce? Then this video is going to do just that. We're going to take the free plugin, WooCommerce Weight-Based Shipping, and I'm going to show you how to set up various different combinations to deal with pretty much every kind of weight-based shipping opportunity that you're going to need for your WooCommerce store. For this video, we're going to be using WooCommerce Weight-Based Shipping, a totally free plugin. It has over 50,000 active installs and gets almost five stars. So it's a solid product to start off with. So all you need to do is go ahead, download, install, and activate that plugin. Next, head over to WooCommerce and into your settings. And inside there, we just need to configure the weight that's going to be used. Head over into the product tab. And inside the product tab, we have the option to set the weight unit and the dimensions. Currently, this is set to kilograms, which is perfectly fine, but you can choose from grams, pounds, and ounces, depending upon where you are in the world and the types of products that you're going to sell. And if you haven't already, you just gonna to need to make sure you've added weights to any or all of your products. So for example, if we open up the shaped vase, scroll down, open up the shipping tab, and inside there, the first option we have is for the weight. And as you can see, kilograms inside here. However, if you change this value, you'll see a different weight-based value inside there as well. Now head back over to WooCommerce, back into your settings and inside there we're going to choose the option for shipping. So what we need to do now is set up the shipping zone. So we're going to add a shipping zone. We're going to set the zone name and we're going to set this for example to be weight based shipping UK. Select the region. So if you want to limit this to specific regions or set up different regions with different values for the shipping, you can do that inside here. We're going to start off just setting this up for the United Kingdom where I'm based and we'll simply hit save changes. So now we can go ahead and add our shipping method. So we're going to add shipping method. We're going to change this from flat rate and we're going to use the new option we've just installed, which is the weight-based shipping. Select that and click add shipping method. So now we can go ahead and edit this and start creating the different prices based upon the different weights. So let's open this up and this now allows us to start creating our shipping rules. So let's add our first shipping rule. We click on add new. And this is where we can set up the first of our rules. So the first thing we need to do is choose whether this is a taxable shipping method. We'll leave this set as yes. So if you're charging taxes, you want to set this to yes. If you're not, you can set it to no. The label, we're just going to call this Royal Mail 24 Hour. We'll copy that and we'll set that for the title for this as well. Next up, we have the conditions. So this is the destination to start off with. Now you can see it's set to all allowed. So that would set this for anywhere in the world, which is not what we want. We need to change this to specific and we're going to set this to be United Kingdom again. So we're limiting now this condition to say that this shipping method is only available to a specific destination in our example, the United Kingdom. You can set up multiple ones inside here, but it's up to you how you want to work. Now we can go ahead and set up the values for this particular order. So we start off with the order weight, and this is where we set the range of values that we want this particular pricing to drop into. For example, we want the order weight to be zero or above, and then we want to specify this is below two kilograms. So we're gonna say 1.99. So what we can do now is we're basically saying that this has to be greater than zero or equal to zero and below two kilograms. You can also set up the order total, so you can set a value based inside you. We're gonna work on the order weight though for this particular example, it's a bit more relevant. Next up, you've got whether this actually applies to after taxes included or after discount is included, and this only applies to the order subtotal, not the order weight. Then you can go ahead and set up your actual charges for this particular shipping method. So the base cost for this, we're gonna say is 4.95. And then you can also come in and configure this to work with a weight range. So if you don't want to set a base cost or you want to use a base cost as well as a weight rate, you can do just that. We'll start off really simple and just keep the base rate to be 495. We'll come back a little later and take a look at these weight rates. Now we don't have access to shipping classes that's only available in the pro version or plus version of this plugin. So we're not going to worry about that. We've also then got modifiers. This allows you to modify or limit the total cost so we can specify shipping does not go over a total rate. So this can be useful if you're working on the weight rate to have a range of different pricing and you want to have an upper limit or a lower limit. That's our first setup though. We'll click on close and we've now created our very first shipping rule. Now just make sure you save your changes and we're ready to test our new shipping method out. So let's just test this bathroom accessories, which I know is under one kilo. So we'll add that to our basket and we'll view our basket. And you can see this now sets our shipping to Royal Mail 24 hours at 495. 
So there's our shipping side of things set up. However, if we start adding a few more items in, so we go over that threshold and we click update, you see we now have no shipping method that actually works because we haven't set any more up to cater for larger amounts of weight. So let's rectify that by creating a second shipping rule that'll cater for larger weights. So let's add a new shipping rule, same as we did before. We'll leave it as taxable, that's perfectly fine. We'll drop in the same information for the titles, change this to specific, and again, we'll set this to United Kingdom. All the weight this time is going to be from two, and we'll set this up to 10, for example, and we'll set a base cost of 10.95. We'll leave everything else as it is, we'll hit close, save our changes and hop back over to our basket. And now if we refresh this, we should find that we now have our Royal Mail 24 hour at 1095. So let's try something a little different. Let's say we want to base this on a range of different weights. We want to cater for things. Let's disable these and let's create a new option. So let's add new. We're going to call this test weight range. Set our destination like before. We're going to set this to United Kingdom. We're going to bypass the order weight and the order subtotal. We're going to come down to the charges. So we're going to set a base rate of 495. And let's just leave it there for the moment to see what's going on. So we'll close this and we'll save our changes. So we set a base rate of 495 for any weight. Hop back onto our basket and refresh. And we see there's our test weight range at 495. So it doesn't matter how much weight is inside there. Let's just set this to 10, for example. So this is roughly 10 kilos and you can see test weight still 495. So let's head back over and edit this again. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna add some extra charges. So we're gonna say for every kilo, it's gonna increase the price, the base cost by one pound. And we'll just leave that as it is. So we'll just click on close and save our changes and test our basket again. So we'll refresh this and you can see now our test weight range is 14.95. 10 items at one pound per item on top of the base charge. So if we take this down to five, for example, and update our cart, you'll see now we get 9.95, which is our 4.95 and our five pound quantity charge. Now let's just say you only want this base charge to take effect after a certain weight range. So for example, at the moment, we've got our base cost is set to 4.95 and for every kilogram we add up to an unlimited amount, it will add one pound per kilo. However, you might say that the base cost is applicable for the first five kilos and above that, you then get charged an extra one pound per kilo. So what we can do is we can use this over option. We'll set that to five and we'll hit close and save this. Then heading back to our basket, you can see we've got five items inside you. So let's just refresh this and you can see that with five items in, our test weight range is still coming back for shipping at 495. Let's just increase this to 10 or 11, update our cart. And now you can see for everything over five, we start to get added shipping. So this example, anything over five gives us six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and so on. So it increases our charge by an extra five pounds. Hope that makes sense. Now setting those back to what we had before with the charges of one pound per kilo on top of our base cost. What happens if we had 20 items in there? Well, we'd suddenly have a 24.95 shipping charge, which might end up becoming a little bit crazy. So what you can do is you can use these modifiers to limit the total cost. We can set a minimum value and a maximum value. So you can always make sure that you hit the minimum amount of shipping that it costs if people fall below a threshold. And the same goes for the maximum. So let's try that maximum option. Let's just say we want to set a maximum amount of 9.95. So we'll set that inside there and we'll hit close and we'll hit save. So now let's go back. We've got 10 items inside our basket. So let's just set that to be something like two so we can see exactly how the charges are taking effect. We'll update our changes and there's our 6.95. So we refresh that to make sure everything is as it should be. So now we don't want this to go over 9.95. So we increase this to something like 10 update our cart and you can see that even though this would normally cost us 14.95 we've hit the maximum limit of our shipping and set that to 9.95 again i hope this makes sense in what i'm talking about here 
Okay, so we've seen how to set up a range of different types of weight-based shipping. The next thing I wanna quickly show you is how you can have more than one shipping method and then let the end user choose what they want. So at the moment, we've got these Royal Mail 24 hour based upon the weight. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create another one that kind of fits into the same kind of category, but we're gonna make this same day delivery with a different charge. So for that, what I'm gonna do is make life easy and select this one and I'm going to duplicate it. We're gonna come in and we're gonna change the name of this. We're gonna say one Royal Mail one day. Okay, so what we can do now is we can use all the same values, but I can come down, I can set a different charge on here. So we're gonna say, we're gonna set this to be same day is 14.95. We'll close this and we'll save our changes. So now we have two almost identical options. One is for the 24 hour, one is for the same day with the same weight ranges. They just have different charges. So let's head back over to our basket. We'll set this item back to be just one and we'll update our cart. So now you can see we get two options. We can choose between 24 hour or same day. So the end user can then just click on whichever one they want and you can proceed to the checkout. So you can stack multiple different options on top of each other to create really comprehensive multi-tiered weight-based shipping options for one country or multiple countries using this free plugin and the skills I've covered in this video. So now we've seen how to expand WooCommerce's shipping rate into weight-based shipping. If you want to check out table rate shipping or any other shipping methods for WooCommerce, check out this playlist next. If you found value in this video, why not give that thumbs up button a click? It really does help me out. However, if you didn't find value, hit the thumbs down button twice. That works pretty well too. As always, my name is Paul C. This is WP Tutson. Until next time, take care.